Okay, thank you very much. Actually, listening to today's talk, I decided to change a little bit the, the presentation. So it will be more an introduction. But I will uh, mention several things which already mentioned today, the sign process and uh, some uh, connection with probability. So it will be, I think, very, very good for that. <clears throat> uh, OK, so but the purpose, uh, the purpose of uh, what I want to say is, is just to, to tell you that um, about tuplets determinants and why they're interesting. Well, at least I don't know if you get interested or not, but uh, at least I will try to explain uh, this. Uh, so, so well, so let us first consider some function uh, which is integrable. Uh, well, C is a unit circle. I call it the unit circle. So then we can uh, define Fourier coefficients of this function. All like that. And uh, using the Fourier coefficient, we, uh, we can define what is known as a tuplets matrix. So n times n tuplets matrix. So T, uh, Tn. With uh, uh, F is called the symbol of the tuplets matrix. So this is a matrix uh, built in the following way. You take the Fourier coefficients, and uh, along each diagonal, it is uh, the same Fourier coefficient. So it is a constant along diagonal. So the main diagonal is F0, the next F1, the lowest F minus 1. And uh, here we have it from 0 to N minus 1, the indices. <coughs> so and the corresponding determinant is called the tuplets determinant. Uh, so, and we have the following question. Uh, so what happens with dn uh, as n tends to infinity? Okay, so this is, this is um, the main question. And uh, now I will tell you what kind of applications it might have. So, the so first application uh, well, examples, maybe examples. Uh, it's, it will be mostly, uh, there will be some, some, a few general results and uh, some examples. So examples, example of application, maybe. So in the first case, uh, we will consider the following symbol. <clears throat> this is a unit circle, uh, and suppose our F be given the following way. So f is 1. f is, uh, depends on some parameter alpha. So f is 1 on this arc, angle alpha. And on the complement arc, the f is 0. So it is just 1 here. And uh, now the question is, um, yes. So now let us look at the corresponding tuplets determinant, right? So first of all, let's look at the Fourier coefficient. It is very easy. So then we have simply from alpha to, to pi minus alpha. And this is just uh, this. Yes, this is just like this. Okay, so this way we can easily compute. So we'll have minus 2i pi k, right? i k alpha minus minus i k alpha, right? Okay, so what is this? This is a sign, right? So we have a sign alpha k uh, with a minus sign here. Uh, divided by pi k, right? As far as I can see. So this is done for, this is if k is not zero, right? So k is zero, it is, you can do it yourself and see what happens. 
So this is, uh, this is already something which reminds you, right, so, uh, of something. It, it, it looks like the same kernel that was considered before. And indeed, so from here it's very easy to derive the following, the following, uh, the following result. So you just take the limit of the tuplets determinant with this symbol, but now instead of alpha, I will put a variant symbol. So it will put a constant divided by n. So put two s over n. So s is fixed, and n is the same n as here. So this is a, a so-called double scaling limit. Because n appears in two places. So from here, you, you will already, you, it's not so difficult to see that this will, you will obtain a, a Fredholm determinant uh, with, the, with, with the kernel, which is a signed kernel. So, okay, you can see that it, it acts on the interval minus one, one. So in the case sign, the kernel from x on y is the following. So sine uh, s times x minus y divided by pi x minus y. Right, so that is the, that is the, the famous sine kernel. Uh, okay, so it is um, a simple exercise in operator theory maybe. Uh, so then, uh, let us call it simply PS. So then this object uh, can be interpreted as probability, probability of a, of a gap. In, so so if, you look, if you look at this as a, a sign process, you have the particles. This is a probability uh, that there are no particles that no particles in the interval minus s over pi, s over pi. Well, in the, with the sine, sine kernel process. So also, uh, equivalently, it is a gap probability for various, uh, for various ensemble of uh, random matrices. So most typical is uh, Gaussian, uh, Gaussian unitary ensemble. Okay, so this is this is this interpretations of this determinant as, as a gap probability. Uh, so what can be? Uh, so what is the application? So far it is just observation, kind of. This is, a, this is just uh, observation. Uh, so what can, how can we use it? Uh, here we have the following question. Uh, so what is the <laughs> large behavior of this probability? Uh, well, what is the behavior of this probability when S, uh, S goes to infinity? What is the probability of this uh, gap for large S? Uh, so that was conjectured. The formula was conjectured by uh, by Meta already. Then there was the O and Dyson. Mm -hmm. And the, and the key in the, in the derivation is this property. So I don't know, this property one, or rather, uh, okay, the asymptotics of tuplets determinants so obtained, uh, there is a good method to obtain it, obtained by uh, Riemann Hilbert problem, Riemann Hilbert methods. Uh, 
uh, is the key to the answer. Hmm. Yes. And the namely, uh, we, can, we can obtain the, so, so uh, says that one obtains after a lengthy calculation that actually the, the logarithm of this determinant to S over N uh, is given by the following formula. So N squared logarithm of cosine S over N minus uh, one fourth, I think, uh, logarithm n times sine s over n plus some constant c zero and something small. Uh, this is true for n going to infinity and s, uh, okay, larger than at some n zero and less than n actually. This is, this is, um, ah, no, this is, this is actually the following error term is important. It is the following one divided by n sinus s over n. That's the formula. C0 is a constant, actually. So C0 has an explicit form 1 12 log 2 plus 3 uh, zeta function, uh, zeta function derivative of zeta function at the point minus 1. Yes. So from here, in this formula, you can fix this and take limit n to infinity. And then we obtain that PS is equal. Uh, so here you, should, you, you will have a squared divided by 2 minus 1 fourth log S plus C0 plus the error term 1 over s. And this is the answer to the, the answer to the, uh, to this question. Okay. So in fact, uh, to tell you the truth, everything except for this constant you can do without Toeplitz determinant, but you need it to, to get a constant, and this is a kind of a good method as well. Okay, so, about 15 minutes, right? So the next step. So that's it for this application. If you have questions, you have to ask, because then it will be lost, I will delete it. Ah, yeah, log logarithm. Yeah, that's true. Well, that's a good uh, observa observation. Any more mistakes found? Yes, yeah, so you, you, you notice that it decays very rapidly. So e to the, it's a Gaussian decay. But there is some prefactor. Mm, okay, so the, uh, this is this is the uh, application of the of the situation when you have a symbol uh, on an on an arc of, of the circle. So it is zero here. So for the case where you have a symbol on the whole circle and without zeros, uh, there is much more general uh, statement. Well, here I could generalize it somewhat by considering some other um, here some other things. But in fact, um, but in fact, there will be some limitations. So I think I don't need this. So I cannot, of course, uh, avoid mentioning uh, this uh, the most standard uh, result, which is a Strong-Sager limit theorem. Same thing. The second and second.
Okay. So it is the following. Uh, so we, we're going to consider function uh, integrable, but uh, such that such that um, the logarithm of this function uh, is, uh, well, I will uh, make it a little bit less general. It's just smooth in its circle. So, of course, it cannot have a zero now. Not have a zero. So, or infinity. You know, this. Hmm. It is rather a good function without zeros or singularities. So then the statement is the following, that, uh, that, uh, that, yes, so I will call this logarithm V of C. Okay. So, so then dn of this function uh, I will again write it for the logarithm. So it will be n times V0, so the zeros for a coefficient uh, of V now, so V uh, plus a constant of the following form, k, v, k, v minus k. Plus something small, I don't care, for n is large. The smallness, of course, depends how smooth the function is. If it is very, if it is um, analytic, then, uh, then you will have the uh, exponential decay. Uh, okay, so this is, this is a statement of this on Sege limit theorem, because it was proved by Sege, it was proven in two steps. First, it was proven in 1905, only this term, and it was called Sege theorem. Then, uh, 50 years, actually, literally 50 years later, he proved the second term. Uh, and then, it's, now it's called strong Sege because it has both terms, sort of. Right, so, and he proved it uh, at least this term because um, it was discovered uh, by Enzager that the thing describes correlations for the Ising model, a two dimensional Ising model. So, and that's why he decided to, to do this. But, uh, but here I don't mention Ising model, well, I'll mention it, but that's anything more. Uh, rather, uh, rather there, is, uh, there is an interpret probabilistic interpretation which I really have to mention. So, probabilistic interpretation of that uh, is the following. So first of all, first of all, we will note the following property of, of Turplitz determinants. Right. It's actually, it can be written also as a multiple <coughs> integral. The following form, uh, n times integral, n, n, Integrals here. So here is a is a square of the Undermont determinant. Less than k. And here you have you have the product. From one to n. Okay. So so if you look at that, you will recognize that uh, it can be, it can be uh, interpreted as an expectation of a linear statistics. So this thing is an expectation with respect to the circular unit ensemble of the following thing. Uh, so this is E to the trace of trace of G. Uh, trace V of G. Yes. Okay, so, so let us uh, suppose... Uh, okay, let's no, don't suppose. So, so CUE is... Uh, CUE is just... Um, unitary, n-dimensional n unitary group. Uh, with hard measure.
right? So, so when you take this expectation, you integrate out uh, so-called uh, angle variables, and this is this will be uh, the result in just eigen, uh, eigenvalues, the integral of eigenvalues. So here you have e to the power of trace of v actually, and that's why it is. This sort of, uh, if you know about this, it's almost obvious. So in fact, so this observation allows you also to, to do this, uh, to, to note that there is, the theorem has a probabilistic uh, interpretation and this has the full end. So that John uh, Segel limit theorem. So we, here we assume, uh, we assume that v0 is zero, so there is no zero Fourier coefficient of v, and v is uh, simply real valued. Okay, circle. So then, uh, then, then we can say the following. So we can say that expectation of the CV. So, uh, so I'm, I'm just uh, writing a characteristic function of the random variable with a trace g, trace v of g. So I'll say i t trace v of g. I'm just writing a characteristic function of this, right, of this variable. But, but I, know, I know the result because this is exactly the, the theorem, right? This is exactly. So characteristic functions uh, are actually triplets determinants. You can also think of it this way. So this uh, is then. So v0 is 0, I assumed like that. And here v should be replaced by itv, right? it times v. So then you have minus t squared. Then you divide by two multiplied by two, and here you have the sum key VK. Like that. And here you should call it, if you call it sigma squared, so one plus something small. <clears throat> so it means that, uh, it means that this, uh, random variable trace v of g converges uh, in distribution to the normal normal random variable centered at zero. Variance. Okay. Uh, so this is what I wanted to say about Sega theorem, and uh, maybe last thing I will say, just to finish. Uh, so, in fact, uh, there, there are also interesting cases where you have a symbol which has singularities. So if a symbol has singularities, then the thing may diverge. You can have a zero in the circle, for example. So I just wanted to write you the formula in this case, in the simplest case, where the symbol f has a, the... Uh, most component as before, but now it has a, it can have a zeros. No, po or poles maybe, or uh, not poles, but uh, some infinities, or, or maybe oscillations, if alpha is imaginary. So at 10 points on the circle, you have this, it's called zeros, let's call them zeros positive L. So then uh, how do you modify the, the formula? So how do you modify the formula? So this will be the last formula that I will write. And then you can do whatever you want with it. So this is just to show you so what, what happens if you look at the singular symbols. This is, this are so-called uh, it's a particular case of uh, fischer hartwig singularities. So cold. 
Yes. So then, uh, in this case, so again, so first of all, the beginning will be the same as before. But then now will be the, uh, but now it is for this part. So, so what, uh, what will be, there will be a logarithmic factor here as well. So there will be, uh, so logarithmic uh, addition here. So there will be the following, the sum alpha j squared from one to m times log n. Yeah, so this is a new feature. The singularity leads to this type of behavior. And then there will be a rather complicated constant. So, so first of all, there will, be, uh, there will be the following constant. So the sum, the logarithms. So you here will have a so-called G function. So a Barnes G function. So, following way. G function is, has the following property. And this is a gamma function. This is a standard gamma function. Okay, so this is a constant. Uh, but there will be also uh, terms uh, considering which will describe interaction between uh, between the singularity and the smooth part. So this interaction, some sorts. And there will be a term which describes interaction between the, uh, the singularities themselves. So this will have the following form. A minus ZK, yes, and that is it. Okay, so this is, this is the, the, what happens if you include singularities. You can also include, uh, so this is only a particular case. I, I'm not going to say too much, but it is a particular case of singularities. And, and it, they, uh, you can, maybe guess that there will be some logarithmic correction over there because this diverges logarithmically for those singularities. Yes, but this is, of course, uh, impossible to, to guess the precise term of that, uh, but it is a generalization of factorials. It's actually the products of factorials in some sense. What is what? Ah, Z, uh, that is a good question. It is a point, this is a point on a circle, or what? Or, or do I understand? Was it your question like that? Or? So the, the, these are the points on the circle where symbol has singularities. Well, and, uh, it should be on the circle. If not, then it doesn't have singularities as far as I'm concerned. Yes, these are points on the circle. Yes, and, and, and the finally, the final word, to explain the title, uh, so I was initially planning to say what happens when, you, when the singularities are moving around and merging together. But this is more special subject. This is, I think, um, is much better for you. Okay, thanks a lot.